Homage to the Beastie Boys there, uh, as you join me for a brand new game called Interstellar Transport Company. Transport Company, Interstellar. Um, and it's, uh, well, it pretty much does what it says on the tin. It's, uh, you're setting up a transport company and it, it works on an interstellar basis. The game's out in a couple of days and the nice people at MT Worlds have given it to me to have a quick peek at beforehand on the basis that I give you a quick peek at it as well. So why don't we take a quick peek at it together? So first thing you're going to need to do when setting up is to choose your company's colour, and I've chosen orange quite obviously, uh, and then the company name, uh, and we are the ultra safe uh, space flight. Space, space, there you go, space flight corporation, uh, because that's, that's exactly who we are. Uh, so for this demonstration, I've, I've basically uh, gone with a pre-designed scenario uh, on normal difficulty. So the first thing you're going to see when you start up a game is you're going to see this magnificent star field. Uh, and the uh, the larger stars here are the ones that you could potentially visit and uh, and set up exciting uh, exciting transport operations. And uh, when you kick off, you, uh, you begin where mankind, humanity, has not spread beyond the borders of the home solar system in the slightest. So... Uh, so we'll head in there to start with, and here it is. Uh, you recognise it. Um, you are here. There we go. Uh, you're on Earth. Uh, just in case you were unaware of that, where you were being. Yes. Um, and uh, and you've got four AI competitors. Now the game does have multiplayer, but that is not going to be enabled until the final game launch, um, or the, the the early access launch at least. I can't even remember if this is early access. Oh, bollocks, I probably ought to look that up. All right, I'll do that now. Yes, it is going to be an early access game, uh, which is good because it's already in quite a, a stable uh, stable condition. It's certainly playable, um, but a few more features, which is one of the best things you get out of early access, really, would certainly be welcome. Anyway, let's crack on. So, uh, so here's Earth, uh, and we're the first company to get going. Uh, in this single-player game, we're going to have uh, some competition from uh, from AI scumbags, and uh, and we're gonna, we're going to show them exactly who's boss. So uh, so here's your the, your planetary screen here, your screen planetary, um, and uh, basically your your graph is showing you what they're in need of. So the Earth is currently in need of raw materials and rare resources. Uh, while it's looking to offload water, uh, I'd, I'd probably caution against that, consumer goods and a bit of food. Uh, oh, really? We've got, we've got a supply of food? Well, that's interesting. Uh, but there will also be people who are willing to uh, willing to relocate and go to uh, additional planets in order to start setting up colonies and so forth. Uh, now, on the planet here, you can see that there are all manner of spots that are open uh, that, from what I've spotted so far, spots, spotted, yeah, okay, that was an unintentional pun, um, uh, there doesn't seem to be any difference between these individual locations, but you can then buy whatever it is you fancy, really, uh, there's, there's only a few choices right now, but the, the local office will help you gain reputation with the planet, which allows you to expand a little bit more. Then you've got the maintenance hangar, which will help keep your ships uh, tickety-boo. Um, and then taxi services, which help move freight and passengers to your, uh, you know, your spaceport a little bit quicker. Now, the spaceport itself is co-owned. Uh, one thing I should point out, if you're buying a machinery factory or a dilithium fuel refinery, you are supplying the entire planet. This is not something you use exclusively. So uh, you might go like, oh yeah, I totally want to do a bit of dilithium refining. That's my jam. Uh, you are providing refined dilithium to everybody. So it will turn up in the uh, in the general pool for everybody to use. You know, well, why, why would I do such an altruistic thing? If you think you can benefit from it, then that's that's probably why you would uh, get on with that. Now, these chaps here, these are the, the potential spaceport gates. And you're going to need to rent one of those in order to uh, to, to to lift off at all. Um, uh, and you'll you'll need more if you decide to to pile drive the uh, the number of ships you've got up uh, into and out of orbit. 
Uh, so we will buy, uh, well, we'll lease uh, gate one. I mean, my cash is up here. Quite why it's telling me how many how many cents I've got is beyond me. But uh, but there we go. We work with decimal points. Uh, I can uh, lease this gate for thirty thousand seven hundred seventy-two dollars nineteen cents. Just I'd round it up to the nearest dollar, man. I'll I'll, I'll pay the extra, uh, and then one thousand five hundred thirty-eight dollars sixty point nine cents a month, which is weirdly specific. Uh, anyway, I want it. I'm having it. So uh, you can see that's immediately filled out the graph, and that shows who owns what percentage of the spaceport graphs. And right now, that's me. So there's my my little sliver. Uh, right now, uh, the first route I'm going to set up is going to be from the Earth here to the Moon because it's well, it's nice and close, isn't it? Uh, so I'm going to need a gate over here as well, and uh, because I am number one, and all others are number two or lower. Uh, we will uh, we'll pick up gate one now. There's plenty of demand for water and you'll recall that that water was a thing that was uh, That was in in surplus over at over Earthside uh, Also, there's some demand for food fewer food fewer less less. That's the word uh, less food is available uh, On earth to, to ship so I think water is gonna be the way to go And then I could probably make a bit of cash by bringing raw materials back in the opposite direction in fact, I know I can make some cash by bringing raw materials back in the opposite direction. So let's well, let's set that up. Now, the important thing to note when setting up a route is that you're just setting up a route, right? You you don't need you you wouldn't need a uh, a separate goods and uh, uh, and and uh, and passenger route. Uh, add another stop. There we go unless you needed to give it specific instructions. So uh, so here are the different goods types or the different cargo types, including passengers uh, that you can select. And uh, and you can tell, you, you've got the standard, you know, don't pick it up, do pick it up, wait until full, all of that kind of jam uh, going on uh, with each cargo type. But if you just want to load up and ship out as quickly as possible, you don't need to worry about any of that. Uh, you can just set the route up and then you can ferry both passengers and uh, goods on the same route quite happily. Uh, so now we're going to need a ship to stick on there. Uh, this is the Earth Moon Direct. And I, I don't know what sort of waypoint it would consider uh, beyond that. So uh, we currently have no ships, so we're going to purchase one. Now, because we're not running very far, we don't need a, a ship that's particularly quick, but a whole bunch of cargo bays may do us a bit of a favor. So system speed is going to be my uh, my speed within the system. Kind of speaks for itself there. Uh, 114,000 of your space bucks there to, to set one of those up. Now, the other options you've got here are these rockets. Now, rockets are ace. They're really cheap. But as it says very clearly, they're one-time use. So on occasion, you may get a, uh, a an offer for a, for a deal, for a mission, to, uh, to, to get extra bucks for flying cargo or passengers out to a particular location. And uh, there's, there's no reason for you to come back again afterwards. So you just strap them to a rocket and blast the suckers out to wherever it's going and, and reap the rewards. Or at least that's the hope. So I think I'm going to splash out on a, on a 919 here. Uh, the uh, the Doing 919. I think you can possibly see what they're doing there. Uh, and we will set our cargo capacity as much as it pains me to do so. 50% liquid. And then the Dry Hopper, I think, carries me raw resources. Come on, tool tip. Come on, do it. I promise I'll stop moving the mouse. No. Uh, there's a tool tip. I've seen tool tips here before. Uh, or is it a climate controlled one? Ah, oh, there were tool tips. Is it the dry hopper or dry climate controlled? Now, you can put refugees in dry climate controlled hoppers. I know. I, that seems wrong to me as well. Maybe it's over that one. Like that. Oh, it is. Look, it's doing it. It's uh, But it's popped under. Okay. Well, this is pre-release and then it's early access. There you go. Look. Right, so we know we can get consumer goods, rare resources, refugees. You know what? I'm going to put... I'm going to have... 
I'm going to have five of those, and then we'll have some of these as well, because there are some rare resources being produced on the moon, and I might as well, I might as well take advantage of that. So once you've got your, uh, once you've got your ship configured in the way that you want, and uh, reconfiguring it is currently not something you can do uh, once you've purchased it. Uh, we'll tell it to launch immediately, or rather, after the 40 days have, have elapsed, and we'll set that on Earth Moon Direct. Order that ship. There we go. It's on order. Now that's that's all but wiped out my uh, my resource capabilities. But I think we'll buy one more and we'll go for a 909, which is a slightly smaller boat, uh, but nonetheless valuable. And we will uh, we'll split that between cheapy seats, business class seats, because I I figure there's there's quite a few highfalutin uh, business folk currently doing the uh, the jaunt uh, between the Earth and the Moon, uh, and therefore we'll get that going. So I'll place that order as well. And that really does clean me out for the moment. So we'll unpause, and uh, and then we'll we'll rip the time forward at a, at a fair rate. And as you can see, it really does tick along uh, at, a, at a heck of a rate. Uh, now, if we zoom out here, you'll see that the uh, the solar system is, in fact, rotating on its... On its uh, I was going to say Axis, but that doesn't seem right. Okay, my 909's been delivered. We'll slow it back down and we'll go and go see that doing its thing. Uh, because for the most part, you're not going to need to zoom in. Obviously, it doesn't scale here. So this is ship two. You know, we'll give this uh, we'll give this a, a snazzy name, I think. There you go. Uh, ship one is here, and we'll call that uh, the Colonel's bulk freighter. Uh, the Colonel's. Under which, obviously, I can spell uh, Colonel's uh, Bulk Freighter. This is where we find out that this early access version of the game, and you can't spell freighter either, you nana. Uh, da -da, da -da. No, the apostrophe doesn't break the game. Excellent work. Uh, so, yeah, this is also going to be tracking uh, lifetime profit from that particular route. Uh, so, I mean, 909 arrived early, and it's already made a bit of cash, which is good. Uh, ship 2 will be known as uh, overpriced uh, passenger service. Not that I can actually set the price I wish to charge. If uh, were that I could, uh, then I would certainly make it overpriced. Uh, but here we go. So uh, you can see the ships in transit, but that's really only for reference purposes. They're, you know, they're certainly not to scale. I'm really not entirely sure who this dude is, you know. I think he might have a d it's police of some description, given it's flashing red and blue. But uh, but honestly, couldn't tell you. Uh, and I've done all the tutorials, me. I, I'm, yeah, I'm bang up to date on tutorials. Uh, so as we zoom in, oh, whoops, a daisy. As we zoom in on the Stargate, you will see uh, the spaceport, rather, not the Stargate. You will see uh, ships going back and forth. And what you'll also see now is that uh, my competitors have arrived to uh, to snap up other gates. And the one thing I've noticed about the AI yet, because I am a long way from having mastered this game, uh, is that the AI doesn't half like to pile drive massive numbers of ships on these early routes. Uh, and that means that while my running costs stay relatively manageable, uh, they they sure do bring in a whole bunch of loose change, which they then invest in more ships. Uh, so I'm gonna, you know, we'll we'll look at that in a bit. Um, meanwhile, we should be able to see who's this joker. Who are you? Um, and what are you selling? Why are you just doing? Why are you just doing laps in orbit there? You should should be coming into land or not, as the case may be. There we go. I don't even know which ship that is. What, who, who are you? Oh, you are the overpriced uh, passenger service. Oh, were you waiting for me freighter to leave? And therein is a quick lesson of why you might want more than one gate. I don't want one just now, however, uh, because that's a that's an expense I'd rather not have. And once I hit 119 grand, I might buy a second of the uh, of the bulk freighters. Right, let's up the tempo a little bit. Because uh, you'll see, every time a ship makes a landing, it tells you how much you've earned. 
8,000, 5,000, 8,000. As you can see, this is all, this is a respectable amount of uh, cash. The, the reds coming off there are maintenance costs, uh, which you pay on a monthly basis, I believe. Come on, do a little bit more. Yeah, five grand. See, we're, we're, we're bringing in some cash. Uh, we haven't quite uh, uh, a subsidy. Here we go. Right, let, get, slow it down. We might want to snap this up. Uh, what was that? A subsidy of 1567 a unit. It's being offered for machinery delivered to the moon, which is all well and good. However, the uh, the the supply of, of machinery is, is currently not what one might hope. Uh, machinery, there's 400 in stock. Yeah, I suppose I could. Uh, I mean, that's 10 trips worth. It's not being produced very quickly. Let's get one going. Uh, purchase a new ship. Machine storage. Yeah, we'll get a 919 on this. Right, and we'll run this until, uh, until it can be run no more. Launch immediately. Get it going. And we'll call this one the uh, Machine Special. So we want to take advantage of that uh, that special offer while we can. And it's going to take a few days for the ship to turn up. But when it does, it's only going to make profit going in one direction. Because uh, it will be coming back empty. But the amount that it should make should be significant. Now we'll receive a supplemental uh, update here. Hold on. There's a subsidy of 39.65 that I completely ignored. Uh, for food delivered to the moon. Oh well, that's that's just terrific. That is should have should have capitalised on that one. Uh, but that's on top of the uh, the standard price that you get for delivering stuff anyway. That's my justification, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so you might be going, oh well, you know, that's terrific. You know, Earth to Moon uh, space flight simulator. Uh, with uh, with a capitalism uh, kind of edge there, uh, looks looks tremendous. Uh, I'm going to buy gate nine, and that way I'll be able to to get my ships in and out a little faster. Um, what else is there? I hear you cry. Well, I tell you, uh, the next thing that we're going to want to look at is uh, is potentially visiting other planets. Now, if we look at, uh, and, uh, Venus isn't such a hot bet, but I think Mars has already got a colony established. So, over here on Mars, it does have a colony established. You've got 520,000 people currently living on Mars. And here's the spaceport. Uh, two gates available. No, no one is, uh, no one's venturing out to Mars right now. But, Mars does have, uh, very high demand for machinery. And it's supplying a bit of raw materials. It's really there's there's not a lot of money to be made here. You can do you can make quite a bit of change by uh, by bringing out uh, passengers because obviously they want colonists like you wouldn't believe. Hold on, what was that? Uh, a new starship, the space bus. The space bus has been released. Um, space bus, nice and big, uh, can haul a hell of a lot of stuff. Uh, it, it it does exactly what you would expect, really. But yes, so Mars needs a bit more development before it gets anywhere. We can upgrade the spaceport, which will cost me 45 grand. It will add more gates. Uh, uh, but only once the uh, the population builds up will it start to produce the, the level of, of goods, the level of services that actually make the planet interesting to visit. The AI I've seen in previous games will actually uh, head out there quite quickly uh, and capitalize. Now, in my first game, uh, of which this is not, uh, I went out here, oh, where are we? Yeah, I decided that uh, I was all about settling new worlds and uh, and creating new civilizations. So I'd headed out to Europa, uh, which is one of the moons of uh, of that there Jupiter. And uh, I opted to uh, I opted to settle that anew. Now in order to do so, you have to subsidize a colony, which will cost you 350,000 smackaroos. It is not cheap. And then you will want to be bringing out uh, colonists like nobody's business. And in order to do that, that's where your rockets come in. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it's it's interesting. The food subsidy on the moon has ended, right? I've got to keep an eye on the machine subsidy ending. And then we'll either sell off our ship on that route or we'll, uh, we'll do something else. So let's say 
for the sake of argument, that I wanted to uh, to settle Europa, uh, we would... No, that's Ganymede. There we go. Europa. We create a new route, and uh, we go, Europa, please. And it'll go, no, no, Chief. Can't, can't do that, because you haven't got a space depot park stop thing effort on there. So it's just not happening. Escape to cancel. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, so you do have to build the spaceport before you can even fly out there speculatively. And then... Initially, you're going to want to hammer in as many uh, as many colonists, co con colonists as you possibly can. Uh, but anyway, as I was describing earlier, now you can see just how uh, much the, the, the AI loves pile driving uh, goods and resources between these two early stops here. Uh, Machinery is running down significantly. Uh, but it looks like we're bringing in rare resources, which is what's keeping the, the machinery development up. Uh, because delivering one produces the other. Uh, raw materials is at a deficit. So the uh, the AI, once again, is bleeding the, bleeding the place dry. Uh, so you are going to need to look quite quickly into expanding out into other areas. Now, playing against the AI so far for me has not provided uh, that much of a challenge. I mean, they've, they've beaten me senseless, but... Uh, uh, it hasn't felt like a, a like a compelling challenge, but I imagine that playing with friends uh, or playing online uh, would uh, would achieve quite a bit. Let's have a let's have a look at the financial situation here. So I've got 350 grand uh, in my back pocket um, uh, with a net worth of 470 thousand. So I've already you know I've already upped the uh, the value of the company by a fair bit. I imagine that some some graphs will be coming here in uh, in the fullness of time and we can expand that out over a one two five year period uh which is which is jolly nice and i've spent 286 grand so you know it's not like i uh i, I haven't invested uh speculated to accumulate i have i've speculated quite a bit um and then as we look on the report side of things we see the comparison between me and uh, and the, the the other spacefaring miscreants. Now, at the moment, I am leading the way in your face, spacefaring miscreants. But this dip that they all have going down here is where they have bought extra ships. And uh, and if things continue as they are doing right now, it will not be very long before they all overtake me. And next time around, we'll try and make sure that doesn't happen. So. Uh, Chuck us a like if you enjoyed this one. Uh, the, the game's out pretty soon. Uh, there's a link to the Steam Store page in the description that you can go and follow at your, uh, at your leisure. Uh, chuck a subscription if you want to catch the next episode in this one, and I'll be back very soon, and we'll see if we can hold our lead. I've been Colonel Failure. Thank you very much for watching. Cheerio.